Good morning. Welcome. Those words mean a great deal to us. They help us express just how we see things differently. And we hope they mean something to all of you who also see things differently and to everyone that is striving to move the world forward. It is great to be back in the Flint Center. As you know, we're just down the road from Apple's birthplace and home in Cupertino. And we've had some amazing history here. We've had some of the most important product introductions in Apple's history on this stage. On this stage, 30 years ago, Steve introduced the Macintosh to the world. And on this stage, we introduce the iMac. which signaled the rebirth of Apple. Today, we have some amazing products to share with you. And we think, at the end of the day, that you will agree that this, too, is a very key day for Apple. I usually go through a few updates, but we have so much to cover today I'm dispensing with those other than to tell you everything's great. <laughs> and I'm going to get started by talking about the product that has changed all of our lives. And that, of course, is iPhone. Last year, we announced two new iPhones for the very first time. These iPhones helped iPhone become the top-selling smartphone in the world. But more importantly, iPhone is the most loved phone in the world with industry-leading customer satisfaction. And these iPhones, like the ones before it, have been recognized time and time again as the best phone in the world. The original iPhone set the bar for which the category would forever be defined. And for every iPhone that followed, we built on the vision of the original iPhone, but pushed further and enlarged what the iPhone could be. Today, we are launching the biggest advancement in the history of iPhone. <laughs> and I couldn't be more excited and more proud to show it to you now. These are the new iPhones, the iPhone 6, 
and the iPhone 6 Plus, they are without a doubt the best iPhones we've ever done. And I hope you'll agree they're the best phones you have ever seen. To tell you all about them, I'd like to invite Phil Schiller up to the stage. Phil? Thank you, Tim. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome back. I am honored to represent the whole team and to be the one to tell you about these incredible new iPhones. Their design is like nothing ever before, incredibly unique. From the glass front that curves around the side to meet seamlessly with the anodized aluminum back, complete with stainless steel apple, it is truly the most beautiful phone you have ever seen. And from the start, the team has envisioned that the new iPhone 6 would come with two display sizes. But not any display would do. <laughs> These are our new generation retina displays. We call them Retina HD. And they are by far the most beautiful displays ever built into a phone. They are new in every way. They're incredibly bright, their colors are stunning, they're accurate, sRGB accurate. And across from the top to the bottom, the team has worked hard to make them the best we know how, from their ion strength and glass all the way down to new thinner backlights. They're packed with incredible innovations. I'll just give you one example. The LCD that displays all your beautiful colored photos is made with a technology called dual domain pixels. And these pixels allow it to have a very broad angle of view with accurate colors. They are simply stunning, unlike any displays ever on a phone. And yes, they're bigger. They're a lot bigger. Here on the left is an iPhone 5S. In the center, iPhone 6. And on the right, the iPhone 6 Plus. I think you can see the difference. And if you don't know, here's their sizes. 4.7 inch for iPhone 6, 5.5 inches for iPhone 6 Plus. And boy, are they packed with pixels. The iPhone 6, 1334 by 750. That's more than a 720 HD display. And the iPhone 6 Plus, 1920 by 1080, full 1080 display with an even higher density. What's remarkable is these displays packed with so many pixels. The new iPhone 6, I'm sure some of you have already done the math, has over 1 million pixels. In a phone, that's an incredible, incredible density. And the iPhone 6 Plus, over 2 million pixels. 2 megapixel display. These are larger. They have more than the 5S. In fact, the 6S, 38% more pixels. The 6 Plus, 185% more pixels than the 5S. So huge displays packed with pixels, but here's the real magic. They're done in phones thinner than anything we have ever made. Yeah. iPhone 6, it's just 6.9 millimeters thin compared to 7.6 for the 5S, and the 6 plus 7.1, both thinner than any phones we've ever made. That took an incredible amount of engineering. So stunning displays larger, more pixels, but thinner than ever before. And they are incredible at imaging all your content. The contrast is higher, the blacks are darker, the angle of view is broader. Your photos look gorgeous, and there's more to see on each of them. The text is incredible, too, even sharper and more of it. You can see here in the Messages app, the iPhone 6 displays more than before, and the 6 Plus displays more, and there's extra room there, so we put your friends' faces right there, front and center. And when you turn them in landscape, we show more as well. And we took special advantage of the iPhone 6 Plus because of all those pixels to do some new things with our apps. So for example, the Messages app now has a new horizontal two-up display. Your weather shows more of your day. Stocks, for those of you who follow stocks, you get a great horizontal view now with two-up. Mail has two-up so you can see your inbox and your messages. 
And when you bring up the keyboard in any of your apps with the iPhone 6 Plus, that keyboard takes advantage of the display area to give you some more keys, for example, dedicated keys for cut, copy, and paste. There's even a new horizontal home screen view, if you like to work this way, with your dock along the right-hand side. So we do everything to take great example uh, advantage of these huge displays and make them more capable. Now, one of the things the team's worked on is to help you not only feel great in your hands with these phones, but make it easier to use, one-handed. With iOS 7 last year, we introduced a new gesture, a side swipe gesture, thinking ahead to these phones and knowing that you'd want to use them here, and with the curved display that would feel really nice to slide from left to right. So for example, if you're in Safari, looking at a website, you can move backwards and forwards by just swiping from the side of the display on one side and swipe back from the other side of the display. That makes so much sense in a larger display where you want to use it one-handed. This works in mail, in messages, and more. We've also added a brand new gesture specifically for the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus. It's called reachability. What's reachability? Well, if you double touch, not even press, just double touch the Touch ID button, this is what happens. The whole display slides down so you can reach anything at the top without having to take your hand off the bottom of the display. It's so convenient and intuitive it would be really like to use it. And once you tap something, it slides right back up again. The team even took the sleep-wake button from the top and moved it to the right-hand side, so that's easy to press as well, all one-handed. So the team has done a great job building beautiful displays with a lot of pixels, making it a thinner iPhone than ever before, making it easier to use one-handed. So what about all that great software you already have? We all love our apps. And I'm really proud to tell you, the App Store now has over 1.3 million applications. Yes. And all those apps are built with Xcode. And the team at Apple has made sure that Xcode takes advantage of these new displays with automatic layouts, easier than ever to make your software scale across them. But what about all those apps that haven't been updated yet, don't know anything about these displays? Well, here's what happens. They just work. So we have an iPhone 5S on the left, 6 in the middle, and again, 6 Plus on the right. This is the CNN app before it has been updated to take advantage of these displays. Built into iOS is now a desktop class scaler, technology that makes this software look beautiful on different size displays. displays. And so the text is sharp, the colors are beautiful, it all just works. And if a developer wants to take advantage of these big displays, as we have with our apps, and do special work, as CNN is doing, you can create even more incredible apps with more density of content. CNN's doing that for the 6 and the 6 Plus in their app, and they're creating a new horizontal view as well with two panels to take advantage of these large displays. So developers, all their apps can work, and they can do some exciting new things with them too. So those are the new Retina HD displays in the iPhone 6 and the 6 Plus. That alone makes these phones amazing, but that doesn't come close to telling the story of why these are the best phones ever made. So what else? Next, the chip inside. A new generation chip, the Apple A8. This is a 64-bit chip, our second generation. It has two billion transistors, the A7 had one billion, so it's a lot more. <laughs> it's built with a new 20 nanometer process. Why, why does that matter? Well, it lets us make two billion transistors in a chip that's 13% smaller than the A7. And it delivers great performance. Up to 25% faster CPU performance. Up to 50% faster graphics performance. And if you look at what's happened over the years, our team has done a great job of driving that performance each year. Now, the iPhone 6 with the A8 chip is up to 50 times faster than the original iPhone at CPU tasks. And at graphics tasks, up to 84 times faster. So incredible performance. But the team had an extra goal with the A8 to deliver that performance in a way that's incredibly energy efficient. It's 50% more efficient than the A7 chip. And that allows us 
to sustain performance over a longer period of time. Why does that matter? Well, here's what happens with other smartphones. They can hit a speed number in the beginning, but very quickly they need to throttle down the performance so their device doesn't overheat. Well, with the A8 chip, the team has been able to drive performance over a longer sustained period of time, deliver great performance while you're doing things that take a while, like playing a killer game. This is really, really important. Combine that with some of the new technology we've been launching, you can do amazing things. Just this summer, we launched Metal. Metal is a new graphics library for our developers so they can create killer 3D apps and games. Traditionally, 3D apps and games are made with OpenGL, a great open standard graphics library, but it comes with a performance penalty, a lot of overhead. With Metal, you can have a thinner layer. Developers can write close to the metal of the chip and get maximum performance. And everyone's doing that. Here's a list of some of the developers that are already planning to bring out games using metal on our chips this year. You're going to see incredible performance. We've given some of them access to the AA chip to let them get started working on taking advantage of this incredible level of performance and see what they can do with it. We thought we'd bring one of them out today so you can see some of the cool stuff they're working on. And we had to pick the developer with the coolest name you have ever seen. Super Evil Megacorp. <laughs> that alone is a reason to bring them on the stage. So I'm very happy to introduce Stephen, uh, Stefan Sherman, co-founder and chief creative officer of Super Evil Megacorp. <laughs> Stefan? Welcome. Good morning. Today, I am thrilled to debut for you Vainglory, the multiplayer battle arena perfected for touch. With me is my co-founder, Tommy, who will be playing Petal, an unlikely warrior small of size but big of courage. In Vainglory, players play a unique hero with unique skills and abilities. For example, Petal here can plant seeds that she can sprout into little munions. Oh, uh, and they also like to disco. Petal looks right at home, but there is real danger brewing nearby. Let's take a look at the world of Vainglory now, running in real time on metal. Multiplayer battle arena gaming is the most popular game genre in the world, enjoyed by tens of millions of players every day. Vainglory brings this world-class competitive gaming to iOS. Now the rules are simple. Two teams battle to destroy a giant crystal in the heart of their opponent's base. Think of it like capture the flag, but with crystals. We fused our evil game engine with metal and absolutely loved the result on the new iPhone 6. A world of 1.3 million polygons running at 60 frames per second. New environment effects like dust particles and butterflies. New lighting effects like these crystals casting blue light and more than 100 fully animated characters all interacting at once. And in the heart of it all lurks the powerful Kraken. This is a massive monster that if captured by your team will fight on your side to help you destroy the enemy crystal. And I think that's exactly what Tommy has in mind. Uh-oh, looks like Tommy's opponents have the same idea. Now it's a fight for the Kraken. Great work. Now that the Kraken has been captured, time to push to the enemy base and destroy their crystal. We founded Super Evil Megacorp to bring the hardcore gaming experiences of PCs and consoles to the mobile generation. This is why we are so thrilled about the performance now possible on the iPhone 6 and Metal. Vainglory is our first game, and we can't wait for you to try it. You won. Good game, Tommy. Join us when Vainglory launches in the App Store this fall. Thank you.
<laughs> I love it when they fist bump and walk off stage after nailing the Kraken. That's not bad for their very first game. Uh, it shows what's possible. It's, sometimes it's tough to remember when we're sitting here watching on a 35-foot screen just how incredible that is coming from a phone that you carry around with you everywhere you go. It is killer gaming. So larger display, thinner design, incredible performance. Obviously, uh, that impacts battery life. Well, I'm really happy to tell you the team has worked hard to make the iPhone 6 and the iPhone 6 Plus have equal or better battery life in every metric than the iPhone 5S. Just look at some of these numbers. iPhone 6, 50 hours of audio playback, 11 hours of video watching, 11 hours Wi-Fi browsing, 10 hours LTE and 3G browsing. The iPhone 6 Plus, 80 hours of music listening, 14 hours of HD video playback, 12 hours Wi-Fi browsing, LTE browsing, 3G browsing, really great battery life. Along with the A8, there's our motion coprocessor, a new generation, M8. And as you know, this motion coprocessor works along with offloading the work from your processor with all those great sensors in your phone, the accelerometer, the gyroscope, the compass. And this is really helpful for things like fitness applications to track data and provide it back to you. Well, the new generation M8 can tell when you're cycling and you're walking, you're running. It also has a new ability to estimate distance. So for example, you can go for a run. It can tell how many steps you're running, but also how far you've gone. And for the first time, give you credit for elevation as well, flights of stairs. Yeah. We all need to run more stairs. How does it do it? Well, there's a new sensor built into iPhone 6 and 6 Plus, the barometer. It me measures relative elevation from air pressure. And that will show up in things like the new health app in iOS 8, where you now get credit for flights of stairs you walk throughout your day. And developers can take advantage of this new sensor as well. For example, Nike is working on a new version of the Nike Plus running app. So it can track not only how far you run, but also the elevation as well. So great new AA chip, great new MA chip, the core, of iPhone 6 and 6 Plus. And there is so much more. There's new advanced wireless capabilities. The LTE in iPhone 6 and 6 Plus is faster than ever, 150 megabit per second. That's compared to 100 in the previous products. It does that with a technology called carrier aggregation. And there's now 20 LTE bands compared to 13 previously. That's the most in any smartphone in the world. It means we're working now with over 200 carriers around the world to support LTE on iPhone 6 and iPhone 6 Plus. And there's a new technology with LTE. Maybe you've heard of it, it's called VOLTE. That stands for Voice Over LTE. It means we can take the voice data of making a phone call off of the 3G network and move it up onto the 4G LTE network. It makes calls clearer sounding and you always have simultaneous voice and data. We're working with a lot of carriers around the world who are going to roll out support for Volte with iPhone 6 and iPhone 6 Plus. There's also faster Wi-Fi in both of the products as well, 802.11ac, which is up to three times faster than 802.11n, up to 433 megabit per second. Now, if you combine Wi-Fi and Volte, our engineers came up with a really cool idea, making calls over Wi-Fi using your standard cellular connection. So maybe at your office or your home, you don't have a great cellular reception, but you do have Wi-Fi. You can make a standard call in the same way, and it'll go out over Wi-Fi, but as you leave your home and transition onto the cellular network, the call will seamlessly just hand off and keep going. This is really cool technology. This is just the start of it. The first carriers working together with us on it are T-Mobile in the US and EE in the UK, and you'll see more quickly over time. So great wireless capabilities. Perhaps many people's favorite feature of their iPhone is their camera. And there are great new cameras in both iPhone 6 and 6 Plus. And people love taking photos with their iPhone for good reason. Here's an example. National Geographic photographer Jim Richardson took this photo in the Scottish Highlands with an iPhone. I mean, it's a beautiful photo. He's taken many more. 
And he and all of us will take even better photos with the iPhone 6 and the 6 Plus because there's an all new iSight camera in it. It's an eight megapixel iSight camera. It has Apple's innovative true tone flash. There's large 1.5 micron pixels. Has a fast 2.2 aperture, but most importantly, there's a new generation iSight sensor in it to take better photos. It's packed with some cool technologies. Let me just tell you one. It's called Focus Pixels. What are those? Let's look inside at the sensor inside the iSight camera. And you'll see these dedicated pairs of focus pixels. And what they do, they have little shutters on them. They read the light coming in from objects. And as the lens moves in and out, it can tell whether that object is in phase or out of phase. This is called phase detection autofocus. It's a technology used by high-end DSLRs. It's the best way to do fast autofocus. And now the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus have it. And they can focus almost twice as fast as the previous generation. And there's so many more things a sensor can do to take beautiful photos. It has great new generation tone mapping. It has beautiful noise reduction. It all adds up to incredible photos. So let me show you a couple taken right with an iPhone 6, straight off the camera, no retouching. People love taking portrait photos with their iPhone. And this is a great one. Exposure is beautiful. The skin tone is really lovely. Great photo. Here's another portrait. He's smiling, if you can't tell. The skin tones are perfect. You have to trust me on that. <laughs> People also love taking macro photos. There's a beautiful one of a California monarch butterfly. Anyone know? That's a female, if you couldn't tell. And even landscapes with the wide-angle lens are just beautiful, particularly with the noise reduction for bluer skies without sacrificing sharpness. And everyone loves now taking panoramas with their iPhone as well. And you take even bigger ones with the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus, up to 43 megapixel photos. And with a new generation gyroscope, the stitching is near seamless. Now, what makes your photos great are three things. It's the five element lens, it's the imaging sensor, and it's also the brains behind it all, the image signal processor that's part of the Apple a8 chip, and there's a whole new generation signal processor inside iPhone 6 and 6 Plus. For example, it has a dedicated hardware block now to do advanced face detection. So you're taking a photo, you can even quicker find faces throughout your scene to get the perfect focus. And it has advanced blink and smile detection, so when you take a burst photo, you can very quickly find the perfect one and present it to you. Now, everything I've been telling you is true across both cameras, iPhone 6 and iPhone 6 Plus. There's one feature different between the two of them, and it's about image stabilization. The iPhone 6 has digital image stabilization, so it can try to help compensate if your hand's not holding the iPhone steady and try to help you keep from your photo being blurry. But 6 Plus adds something new with the iPhone line, optical image stabilization. So what's that? Let's look at the lens inside the iPhone 6 Plus. Of course, it moves front to back to focus, as always. But now, it can also move up and down and side to side. And we combine that with the M8 and with the new gyroscope to automatically adjust and stabilize your image when you're taking a photo. And this works really great, particularly in low light scenarios, we have to take a longer exposure like this. This is taken in the evening, and it's a very sharp photo because of optical image stabilization. So we love the iSight cameras on our phones, and they take beautiful photos. So it's no surprise we don't see a lot of these anymore. Right? Dedicated cameras, small point and shoot cameras, they're certainly not as fun, and increasingly we're taking amazing photos directly off of our iPhones. What's interesting is it's probably been a while since you've seen one of these as well. Anyone remember what they're called? Camcorder. Yeah, camcorder. I think our parents used to use these. Right? People aren't using them anymore. In fact, I believe now that the iPhone has become the world's most popular video camera as well. It takes a beautiful HD videos at 1080p. With iPhone 6 and 6 Plus, we've advanced its video capabilities so much, you're just going to be blown away with the kinds of videos you can take. 1080p. Of course, we can take 30 frames a second, but now it's 60 frames a second as well for really beautiful, smooth videos. And everyone has loved what we introduced last year with slow-mo. Videos after 120 frames a second, well, now 
the six and the six plus can take video up to 240 frames a second. Yes. So you can take videos like this. I was going to say I taught him that, but you wouldn't believe me. Here's another great feature, cinematic video stabilization. This is a really great video of a gentleman riding on a mountain bike. What you can't see is the person taking it is holding an iPhone, also riding on a bike, and the, stable, the video is automatically being stabilized. It's really great. And with iOS 8, we introduced time-lapse video. So now with a single press of the shutter, with iPhone 6 and 6 Plus, you can take images of this quality with time-lapse photography. Now, the new EyeSight sensor has focus pixels, which really helped a lot with getting fast autofocus on photography. Turns out they help a lot with video, too. With focus pixels, we can do automatic focus continuously while you're shooting your video, like this. So you take the video. The flowers go into focus, you pull She's back, by herself. and the young girl goes in focus, all without having to touch the screen and tell it where to focus. It automatically, continually focuses the video. So incredible capabilities for photography and video. That's the EyeSight camera. As you know, on the other side of your, your iPhone, you have another camera, the FaceTime HD camera. And there's an all new version of that as well. It is a brand new sensor, a larger aperture that lets in over 80% more light. And with the ISP, it has improved face detection because it's perfect for taking those killer selfies. <laughs> and kids are going to love this. We now have burst mode on the FaceTime camera as well. You know they're going to do that. <laughs> now this new sensor, this FaceTime HD sensor, does something really cool for photography. It does single shot HDR. So with one picture, not multiple pictures, it gets great exposure for the foreground and the background. We're also now able to do HDR in your videos as well from the FaceTime camera. So amazing cameras, both the front side and the back side, FaceTime camera and iSight camera. Both the iPhone 6 and the iPhone 6 Plus will come with an iOS 8, the latest version of the world's most advanced mobile operating system, and there are so many great features. I just want to point out a few of them that are really wonderful on the new iPhones. First, the new Messages application. You can share your location with friends. You can now share audio messages along with your photos and your videos. And there's a new controller on the bottom right-hand side there that you control with your thumb. So it's really easy to do one-handed. There's a new keyboard with QuickType. It suggests words based on the content of what you're typing, and again, easy to reach one-handed. There's a new health application in iOS 8 that works together with that motion co-processor and all those sensors to help us all stay fit throughout the day. And there's tons of extensibility throughout iOS 8. For example, here, notifications, where LinkedIn and my favorite airline are all connected and right there in front of my notifications. And perhaps the most innovative feature of all an iPhone, Touch ID, not only lets you unlock your phone and make payments in iTunes, but you can also now use it with third-party applications. So that's going to be really cool. That's iOS 8. These are the best phones ever made, iPhone 6 and iPhone 6 Plus, packed with features from everything from those amazing displays to the super fast 64-bit A8 chip and on and on. They are the best we know how to make and I think the best anyone's seen. And the team works so hard to make these in the most environmentally friendly way. So we always like to call attention to this because it matters a lot. Not only do you see all the things you're used to seeing here, there's a new one as well, Beryllium Free, which we commit to do. So the team, the team makes these just, just in a wonderful fashion. There are new cases for both phones. There are new silicon cases, six colors with a great feel, including product red, and new leather cases, five beautiful dyes, including product red there as well. iPhone 6 comes in these three beautiful colors, gold, silver, and space gray. I think by now you're all wondering, yeah, but how much does it cost? 
Well, I'm really happy to tell you it starts at just one ninety nine. Yeah. That's on a typical two-year carrier contract with 16 gigabytes. And now at 299, we've increased the capacity to 64 gigs. And 399, it can, all new configuration, 128 gigabytes. iPhone 6 Plus also comes in gold, silver, and space gray. And it starts at just $299. Yeah, really, you heard a while. You're right. For 16 gigs, $399 for 64, and $499 at that new 128 gigabyte configuration. These are not only the best phones in the world, they really are a great value as well. And they complete our lineup. iPhone 5S, yesterday, the most advanced smartphone in the world is now starting at just $99. The iPhone 5C in an 8-gig configuration, typical two-year carrier contract offered for free. Next question, so when can we get them? We're going to start to ship them on September 19th. That will be in the US and eight other countries. In those countries, you'll be able to pre-order them starting this Friday on the 12th. And the team is working hard to make this the fastest rollout ever for iPhone. So we're going to try to be in 115 countries by the end of this year. Of course, there's also the new iOS 8 that we're seeing up here and, and all lusting over. It is amazing. The team works hard, as always, to make it available to the widest number of customers possible. So here you see the list of all the devices that are supported with iOS 8, a huge number of devices. All these customers will be able to download for free iOS 8 on September 17th. Yes. So that is the new five iPhone 6 and iPhone 6 Plus. Thank you. Thanks, Phil. Thank you. So hopefully you can get an idea of just how amazing the iPhone 6 and iPhone 6 really are, how they're the best phones you've ever seen. But a great product isn't just a collection of features. It's how it all works together, how it makes you feel. These products are, have bigger screens, and they're amazing, but they're much better in every single way. And to make this point clear, we've enlisted the help of a couple of our friends to do some fun new ads. And I'd love to share one of those with you right now. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. What do you think? Did you like them? Do you know who they are? Does anybody know who they are? Justin Timberlake and Jimmy Fallon. <laughs> These guys are incredibly fun to work with. Let's, do you want to see another one? Here's, here's another one. This is the iPhone 6, and this is the iPhone 6 Plus. They come with a thing called health, so they can help you track a lot of stuff. Like today, I walked 3.8 miles. Well, I ran 4.2 miles. <laughs> well, I climbed 11 flights of stairs. <laughs> well, I drank a smoothie that had 362 calories in it. Well, I had a funnel cake that had 1,230 calories in it. You know, that's not good, right? It was good. It was delicious. Thank you. 
So that is iPhone. And now I'd like to talk about an entirely new category of service. And it's all about the wallet. Our vision is to replace this. And we're going to start by focusing on payments. Payments is a huge business. Every day, between credit and debit, we spend $12 billion. That's over $4 trillion a year. And that's just in the United States. And this business is comprised of over 200 million transactions a day. That's 200 million times that we scramble for our credit cards and go through what is a fairly antiquated payment process. It looks something like this. Can I see some ID, please? Thank you. Now this is... <laughs> Thank you. This whole process is based on this little piece of plastic. And whether it's a credit or a debit card, we're totally reliant on the exposed numbers and the outdated and vulnerable magnetic stripe interface, which, by the way, is five decades old, and the security codes, which all of us know aren't so secure. It's so easy to lose your card or have it compromised. It's no wonder that people have dreamed of replacing these for years. But they've all failed. The New York Times said it best. A truly mobile wallet has long been described as imminent, but it remains elusive. Most have been a disappointment or have not yet worked well enough for mainstream adoption. Why is this? It's because, as it turns out, most people that have worked on this have started by focusing on creating a business model that was centered around their self-interest instead of focusing on the user experience. We love this kind of problem. This is exactly what Apple does best. And so we've created an entirely new payment process, and we call it Apple Pay. And I'd like to show you just how fast and just how easy it is. I think your total is 2378. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Maybe, would you like to see it one more time? Just in case you may have blinked and missed it. Here it is. It is so cool. That is Apple Pay, and to tell you more about it, I'd like to invite Eddie Q to the stage. Eddie? Thanks. Thanks, Tim. It's great to be here this morning. Now, Apple Pay is built into every iPhone 6 and 6 Plus, and we've got a groundbreaking NFC radio antenna built across the top. Now, NFC is the standard for all contactless payments. Now you also have the convenience and security of Touch ID. And we've got a new chip called the Secure Element. 
and it's built into every iPhone 6, and it stores all of your payment information encrypted and securely. You can also see all of your credit cards on Passbook. Now, Apple Pay is easy, it's secure, and it's private. Let's get started with how easy it is. Now, we have hundreds of millions of credit cards and debit cards from customers in their iTunes store accounts. When they get a new iPhone 6, they can just say, use the card on file. But it's also easy to add a new card. You use your iPhone iSight camera, we take a picture of the card, gather all the information, go to your bank and verify that that's your card, and we add it right to Passbook. <laughs> and now, with just a touch, you've paid. It's that fast, it's that easy. Now, we've also integrated security throughout both the hardware and software in a way that only Apple can. So when you add a new credit card, we don't store the credit card number and we don't give it to the merchant. We create a device-only account number and we store it safely in the secure element. And each time you pay, we use a one-time payment number along with a dynamic security code. So you no longer have the static code in the back of your plastic card. And if your iPhone is lost or stolen, you can use Find My iPhone and suspend all of the payments from that device. And again, because the credit card isn't stored on the device, there's no need to cancel your credit card. <laughs> now, security is at the core of Apple Pay, but so is privacy. We are not in the business of collecting your data. And so when you go to a physical location and use Apple Pay, Apple doesn't know what you bought, where you bought it, or how much you paid for it. The transaction is between you, the merchant, and your bank. And the, <laughs> and the cashier doesn't get to see your name, credit card number, or security code like they do today when you hand them a plastic card. So Apple Pay, it's fast, it's secure, and it's private. Now we're starting in the US with credit cards and debit cards from the three major networks, American Express, MasterCard, and Visa. And we've got the six biggest issuing banks in the US, along with a few more. They add up for more than 80% of all credit card volume in the US, and we'll keep adding even more banks. Now you can use Apple Pay in the over 220,000 merchant locations that accept contactless payments today. But we've been working with some of the largest retailers to enable Apple Pay in all of their locations. The largest department store, Macy's and Bloomingdale's. The largest drug store, Walgreens and Duane Reed, with over 8,000 locations and 8 million visitors. Staples, the largest office products. Subway, with over 26,000 locations in the US. McDonald's with 27 million visitors every day, and McDonald's is even adding Apple Pay to its drive-thru. <laughs> Whole Foods, the healthiest grocery store and leading provider of organic food. And our own Apple retail stores. <laughs> and Disney, the happiest place on Earth. Now, Disney is adding Apple Pay to all of their Disney stores and Disney World in time for Christmas. And, and that's just some of the many retailers that are adding Apple Pay in all of their locations. But what about online? We want to make online purchasing just as fast, more secure, more private. There's over a billion dollars a day spent on online purchasing. That's five million daily transactions just in the US alone. And the process is really cumbersome. You got these long forms to fill out for each and every app that you shop in. Well, with Apple Pay, one touch checkout. There's no need to enter your credit card, your expiration date, your security code. You don't even have to enter your shipping or billing address. And none of your credit card information is shared with the merchant. We use the one-time payment number out of the secure element. Now we've been working with some great retailers like Target 
to enable Apple Pay into their shopping app. So I don't know about you, but I'm looking for some Beats headphones. <laughs> and now, with Apple Pay, you can just check out with a touch. And you see the credit card and the shipping address. And now, with one touch, I've bought it. It's that simple. Now, we're adding Groupon. Groupon is the leader of e-commerce, and they're incorporating Apple Pay right into their app. So now you can see a new deal and buy it with just a touch. Uber's got a new feature called Ride Now, so you can request a car using Apple Pay without the need to create an account at all. Panera lets you order your favorite sandwich or salad and have it ready for pickup with just a touch. MLB is adding the ability of buying tickets right in their app with Apple Pay. Our Apple stores where you can buy all of our latest products. And OpenTable. Now you use OpenTable to make dinner reservations. But in participating restaurants, you're going to be able to use Apple Pay in the OpenTable app to pay for your check. That's really cool. <laughs> and that's just some of the many apps that are incorporating Apple Pay. Now, in iOS 8, we have a new Apple Pay API that's going to be available to all developers, so we can expect a lot more apps. Apple Pay, it comes with every iPhone 6 and 6 Plus. We're launching in the US starting next month. It'll be available as a free update to iOS 8. And we're working hard to bring Apple Pay to even more countries. And that's Apple Pay. Thank you. Apple Pay will forever change the way all of us buy things. And it's just one more reason that iPhone 6 and iPhone 6 Plus are the biggest advancement in the history of iPhone. Now, we've really gone through enough to call it a day. <laughs> You've seen iPhone 6 and iPhone 6 Plus. They're absolutely incredible and a whole new category of service with Apple Pay. But we're not quite finished yet. We have one more thing. to make great products that really enrich people's lives. We love to integrate hardware, software, and services seamlessly. We love to make technology more personal and allow our users to do things that they could never have imagined. We've been working incredibly hard for a long time on an entirely new product. And we believe this product will redefine what people expect from its category. I am so excited, <laughs> and I am so proud to share it with you this morning. It is the next chapter in Apple's story, and here it is.
Apple Watch is the most personal device we've ever created. We set out to make the best watch in the world, one that is precise. It's synchronized with the universal time standard, and it's accurate within plus or minus 50 milliseconds. It's incredibly customizable, so you can find one that reflects your personal style and taste. Because you wear it, we invented new intimate ways to connect and communicate directly from your wrist. And it works seamlessly with iPhone. And it's also a comprehensive health and fitness device. Now, Apple Watch took very deep thinking. And out of this, came some truly remarkable innovations. And one of those was the user interface. As it turns out, with every revolutionary product that Apple has created, a breakthrough in user interface was required. With the Mac, we introduced the mouse to make navigation so simple on a personal computer. The click wheel on the iPod allowed users to scroll through thousands of songs in the palm of their hand. And with iPhone, multi-touch gave us the ability to interact with a beautiful canvas of photos or videos or music or all of the information that we use every day. The Apple Watch required the same kind of careful, deliberate consideration. What we didn't do was take the iPhone and shrink the user interface and strap it on your wrist. The display is too small, and it would be a terrible customer experience. For example, if you take a gesture like pinch to zoom. <laughs> it covers the content. It obstructs your view. It just doesn't work. And so we placed extra functionality in a mechanism that's been on the watch for decades. It's this dial. It's called a crown. And on the Apple Watch, it's called a digital crown. The digital crown includes infrared LEDs and photodiodes that translate rotary movement into digital data. Now, you don't need to understand all of that, <laughs> but, but it's a very simple and elegant and amazing input and navigation device. Let me give you an example. Here's back to the map. When you turn the digital crown, it zooms in and out. When you have a list, you can scroll through the list, and you can do all of this without blocking the screen. And if you're within an app, like the clock app as an example, if you press the digital crown, it returns to the home screen just as you would expect it to. Apple Watch, of course, is made to be worn. And it can be worn all day for any occasion. It's a, as much about personal technology as it is style and taste. It seamlessly combines materials and software and technology. And we thought not only of the function, but of the way it looked. Apple Watch has an amazing and rich design story. And we've prepared a video of that this morning that Johnny Ive narrates. There is no one better to tell the story than Johnny. And I would like to run it for you now. You know, it's driven Apple from the beginning, this compulsion to take incredibly powerful technology and make it accessible, relevant, 
and ultimately personal. We've designed a range of products so personal, you don't put them on your desk or in your pocket, you wear them on your wrist. And we conceived, designed and developed Apple Watch as a completely singular product. You know, you can't determine a boundary between the physical object and the software. We're introducing an unparalleled level of technical innovation combined with a design that connects with the wearer at an intimate level to both embrace individuality and inspire desire. The watch senses that you're raising your wrist and then activates the display. You see an organization of apps that, while new, is somehow familiar. Navigation is fluid and vital. Magnifying content on a small display is fundamentally important. So we've developed a whole new interface specific to the challenges associated with a product this small. The digital crown is a remarkable input device. It fluidly zooms into apps. It enables nimble, precise adjustment. And critically, you can use it without obstructing the display. It's also the home button. Apps are designed for lightweight interaction. Smart replies and dictation let you respond quickly to messages. Glances let you swipe through information efficiently. And pressing the button below the digital crown instantly shows you friends you can contact in just seconds. And with digital touch, we've developed an entirely new way for you to connect intimately with others. You can get someone's attention with a gentle tap. You can send a, a quick sketch. Or you can even share something as personal as your own heartbeat. These are subtle ways to communicate that technology often inhibits rather than enables. These apps all take advantage of the flexible retina display. It's been laminated to a machined and polished single crystal of sapphire. That's the second hardest transparent material after diamond. In addition to the digital crown, we've had to invent other input technologies designed specifically for a product this small. So as well as sensing touch, the display also senses force, quite literally adding a new dimension to the user interface. Tiny electrodes around the display recognize the difference between a tap and a press. This provides instant access to a whole range of contextually specific controls. For the first time, and with great intention, We've designed not only what you see, but also what you hear and feel. We've developed a linear actuator that provides haptic feedback to complement your interactions. This taptic engine, combined with the audio feedback from our water-resistant speaker, creates a discreet and nuanced experience. At the heart of the watch, is a custom-designed chip that integrates many subsystems into one remarkably compact module, which is then completely encapsulated to protect the electronics. It's essentially miniaturizing an entire computer system onto a single chip. The Zirconia back has four sapphire lenses, infrared and visible light LEDs, along with photosensors, detect your pulse rate. 
Using its gyroscope and accelerometer and the GPS and Wi-Fi from your iPhone, the watch provides a comprehensive picture of your daily activity. This allows it to establish and suggest goals and reward fitness milestones. The back crystal also houses a unique charging solution that combines our MagSafe technology with inductive charging. Completely sealed, it requires no alignment or exposed contacts. Apple Watch is incredibly accurate. It uses multiple technologies, keeping time to plus or minus 50 milliseconds. We have worked closely with horological experts from around the world to help us understand the cultural and historical significance of timekeeping. And this has profoundly informed our design. We know that wearing something all day, every day, becomes as much about personal preference and self-expression as functionality. So we've designed a range of watch faces. You can personalize both their appearance and their capability. Personalization extends way beyond the interface. We have designed six different straps and a mechanism that makes the straps easily interchangeable with a refinement and precision that's born of functionality. The sport band, in a range of bold colors, is made from a tough, durable, sweat and chemical resistant high performance elastomer. The leather loop comes in a soft, quilted leather that conceals magnets for fastening and adjustment. We've used traditional leather, but in a new sports context that's designed for optimum comfort. The supple, handcrafted leather modern buckle closes with a solid metal clasp and wraps symmetrically around the wrist. The simple leather classic buckle references traditional watch vocabulary. And the stainless steel link bracelet has a slim deployment clasp that is contained within a 2.6 millimeter band. The Milanese loop is crafted from a fluid, flexible stainless steel mesh with a magnetic closure that has an elegant simplicity and is infinitely adjustable. Now, of course, we knew one size wouldn't fit everyone, so we've also developed a smaller watch with matching smaller straps. From different cases and straps, we've actually created three distinct collections. The first, Apple Watch, features a polished case made from a custom alloy of stainless steel. The Sport Collection has an iron exchange cover glass and an anodized aluminium case that is 60% stronger than standard alloys, and yet it's incredibly light and durable. Apple Watch Edition is made from 18 karat gold that our metallurgists have developed to be up to twice as hard as standard gold. Creating beautiful objects that are as simple and pure as they are functional, well, that's always been our goal at Apple. We designed Apple Watch as a whole range of products, 
enabling millions of unique designs, unparalleled personalization, both in appearance and capability. I think we're now at a compelling beginning, actually designing technology to be worn, to be truly personal. We've been working on Apple Watch. We've been working on Apple Watch a long time, and we assembled an amazing team to do so. It covered every discipline at Apple. One of the key people is here this morning. He led our software effort. He's Kevin Lynch. And I'd like to invite Kevin up on stage to give you the very first live demo of Apple Watch. Kevin? I'm so, so excited to show you our work. And I'm wearing Apple Watch right here. Now, to give you a better look, since this is a little hard for you to see, we've built a custom one that's connected to the display here. So let's take a look at that. Now, I also have my iPhone, which is required with Apple Watch. And the first thing you're going to see on your watch when you look at it is the clock. Now, we thought a lot when we were designing Apple Watch about how to really reveal all of the great ecosystem of applications on this device. And we wanted to build it in a way that was really easy to find and use. So we've connected it to the digital crown. So if I press the digital crown at the top here, it takes me out to my applications. Very easy to get out to my apps. Now when I'm here, you can see the clock is the center of the universe. And the apps you frequently use, you might put around the clock here. You can arrange these how you like. And I can pan just by simply swiping on the screen here. I can go from one area to another of my applications. I can also get an overview of all of my apps just by rotating the crown. I will zoom out to a universe of apps. And you can arrange this just how you like. And by tapping, you can go right into a neighborhood of apps. And if you'd like to go back to the clock, you press the crown, and it brings you right back to the clock again. Now, to launch apps, it's very simple. Of course, you just tap on one of them. Here's the clock. Now, the watch faces can be customized just how you like. You can choose different ones. You can arrange them just, just for yourself. And to customize your watch face, you just force touch on the display, and it goes back a little bit. Now I can simply swipe over here, and I can choose another watch face. So if I like this one, I can tap on it. That's now my watch face. I can also customize the appearance and the functionality of these faces. So again, if I force touch here, it will bring me out and I can choose customize. And here I can change the color of the face just by rotating the crown. I can change the color here and slide in some different colors on my watch. Or if I want to change the functionality of this face, I can just swipe over and the green outline shows me what I'm currently changing. So I'll change the center area just by rotating the crown again. You can see I have a variety of information I can pull in here right on my watch face. This is my next meeting, which I use a lot. So I'll keep this just by force touching. Let's look at a couple of other faces we have here. This is uh, one of my favorite ones. This is called the astronomy face. And it shows you where you are in the Earth. So if you wake up and forget where you are, you can just look here. <laughs> and you can go fly to the moon. If you tap on the bottom left here, it will actually fly me over to the moon. This is the current moon phase. We scheduled our event on a nice full moon, so this will look great here. And um, I can rotate the crown here, and it will advance time. So you can see I can go forward and look at the new moon. I can see where the next quarter one's happening and the next full one in about a month. So it's a lot of fun to play with some of these faces as well. In addition to the Earth and the moon, I can zoom out even further, and I can look at the whole solar system. And you can see where all the planets, this is the actual position of the planets right now for this time. Um, and if you forget which planets are which, I can just double tap here and it will give me a little uh, cheat sheet <laughs> so I can see which is which. So let's fly back here now to the Earth. So that's a great watch face called astronomy. There's a whole variety of watch faces here. We spend a lot of time just doing some beautiful work here on the appearance of the faces. This is a nice analog one. Now in addition to looking at the time, we also thought 
it's really important to look at other information as well. So how do we represent that in a really glanceable way? So we've created something called glances. And the way you get to glances is you just swipe up from the bottom of the watch face and you'll see information that you choose to have here. It can be from our built-in apps, it can be from third-party apps, and you can arrange these just how you like. Here's my next meeting, and if I just swipe horizontally, I can see things like where I'm located here at Flint Center, uh, the current weather outside, NASDAQ, stock quite, quote, and uh, world time, where I can see music I'm currently playing on devices around me. And with this, you can actually control music on your iPhone, music on iTunes on your computer, or the music that's stored right on your Apple Watch. Uh, here I've got it connected to my iPhone, which is plugged into the speakers in this room, so it will sound really good. Um, so let's listen to a little Coldplay here. Now you can control tracks and volume, everything you'd expect right here from your watch. And when you're done with glances, you just swipe down and they go away. Now, in addition to your looking at information, you may have information coming to you. And when you're notified of things on Apple Watch, we're using the Taptic Engine to give you feedback on your wrist. It's just like somebody tapping you on the wrist very gently. And even if you're sitting right next to someone, they won't be able to tell that you're getting notified. It's very subtle, but you'll feel it on your own wrist. And you can choose what information, of course, will come and notify you on your watch. And if you do choose to look at something that's coming in, you just raise your wrist, and the notification will come in, just like this. Here's a calendar invitation. Excellent, I'm invited to the karaoke outing, finally, with Eddie. <laughs> so I can swipe up here and I can just see uh, information about where it's at and time. And then I have buttons that are specific to that type of notification. Different buttons will come with different notifications. Here it's a calendar invite, so I can accept or decline, or maybe I'm totally gonna go, accept. Um, now, you might also get other notifications. Ah, here's one from Johnny. Am I going with Love Shack or Wild Thing? Um, I think he's teasing me. I'm going to press reply. And now we've created something called QuickBoard to enable really quick replies to messages that you're getting. And you can see here, we've actually analyzed the text that's coming in and picked out some things you might want to just tap on and send back. So I'm not gonna tell Johnny what I'm seeing. It's a secret, of course. Um, now I can also use dictation to reply. That would send either an audio recording of my voice or I can convert that to text and send it. Or I can use a new selection of animated emoji that we've created for Apple Watch. Let's use an emoji, so I'm going to tap there. And we've got a great collection here of emoji. These are hands, hearts, and then also faces. I think I'll choose a face to send back to Johnny. Now when you're actually sending a face here, you can control both the eyes and the mouth to get just the right expression you'd like to send to somebody. <laughs> so here I'll just uh, edit this a little bit. I'll make it, this is a winking one if I change the eye. Or if I wanna do something a little bit more with the mouth here, I can change that. <laughs> I think that's perfect to send back to Johnny, all right? And so I'll just press send. Now that's sending an animated emoji to Johnny. He can view that on his phone or his watch, and it has the same kind of lively character that I just created. And that lets you send a lot of emotion without interacting very much at all on, on your watch. There's a lot that Apple Watch can do. I'm gonna show you a few more things here. The first one is that we've built Siri into Apple Watch. So we can do Siri just by pressing the digital crown here and ask a question like what movies are playing, for example. what movies are playing tonight in Cupertino. So Siri will go out and check that information. It comes back with a list of movies that are playing around us here in Cupertino. And I can use the crown to scroll this or I can use my finger to scroll the list. Now I'll just uh, tap on Guardians of the Galaxy because that one looks really cool. And you can see we get some very nice poster art there. We can see the ratings, who's in the movie, all lots of information including Showtime synopsis. So you can use a lot of Siri functionality right here on your wrist with Apple Watch. Now we also looked at how you can carry your photos with you. And it's almost like having a little locket of photos right here with you. So we've got a photos app here. And now of course, precious photos number in the hundreds rather than a couple. Uh, so here you can see an overview much like you can on your iPhone. Now though, I can use the digital crown to zoom right in to photos and see which ones I'd like to look at. Or I can easily just pan around and look at photos from different times. And if I'd like to, I can tap on photos and bring them in larger on the screen here and I can look at them one by one just by swiping. 
So this is a really great way to bring your precious photos with you. Now, uh, by default, all of the photos that you favorite on your iPhone or your Mac will just show up on your Apple Watch. It can be any collection that you like to show here. One other app, app I'd like to show you is Maps, which is amazing to have a Maps application on such a little device. So let's tap on Maps here. Of course, it shows me where I'm at here at Flint Center, and I can pan around just by swiping. So we can see the neighborhood. I can also zoom out with the crown. If I rotate the crown, it zooms me out. I can see more of the area. You can see this is really tightly connected as I'm rotating the crown, super responsive. I can also pan around at this view, and if I'd like to get back to where I am, I can press on the bottom left, and it takes me right there. Now, if I'd like to look for things around me, you can bring up a context menu for maps by force touch, and here I have a search command, and I can find things by dictation, my favorites, or if I recently searched for things, I can just tap on those. So we've got Whole Foods here. Let's get directions to Whole Foods. I'll just tap there. And it's going to calculate, um, find the local Whole Foods here. And you got the hours, and you have also a phone number if you'd like to call Whole Foods, and you have directions, walking and driving. So let's get walking directions to Whole Foods. So it's figuring out the best way to get there now. And I'm going to press start, and it's going to do a little simulated walk to, so you can see how it goes here. Now, while you're walking, Apple Watch will give you taptic feedback on each turn, so you'll know whether it's time to turn left or to turn right. And those feelings are different for each direction. So you can actually know without even looking at your watch which way to go. It's like having this invisible guide with you. That's Maps on Apple Watch. Now, the last app I'd like to show you is one that we worked on a lot in terms of communication. We thought hard about how to enable a new form of communication, given that we have the Taptic Engine and, and, and you're wearing Apple Watch. We've created something called Digital Touch. And you get to your friends with Digital Touch by pressing this button right below the digital crown. And there are my friends. Of course, you can choose who you'd like to have here in your friend list. Um, and I can communicate with someone just by tapping. So I'll tap here on my friend Jeff. And I can either phone him or I can send him a message. Or if I tap right in the center, I can create this new form of digital touch communication with Jeff. And here I can draw and tap, have a much richer live communication with Jeff. Uh, he and I go out to lunch a lot, so we've now established this little code. When we're getting hungry, we can just tap each other, and we'll feel it on our wrist. So I'll just do, him, do the uh, triple tap here for going to lunch. We'll see if Jeff is getting hungry like I am right now. Uh, okay, so we do this a lot. That means what's for lunch, so I know that. So I, I know that Jeff really loves sushi, so I'm gonna bring up the color picker and pick a nice blue color, and I'm gonna draw a fish, because um, I know how much Jeff loves sushi. And drawing in front of millions of people is really fun. Okay, <laughs> there's my fish. What do you think? So that's being sent now. <laughs> Jeff is really excited. I don't know if you noticed, he just sent me his heartbeat. Um, he doesn't always do that. It's a special day. And, um, and that's not just an emoji. That actually is reading the heart rate off of Jeff's wrist with Apple Watch and sending me his heartbeat so I can feel it on my wrist. That's never been done before. It's a really great aspect, this new form of communication with digital touch. So those are just a few things on Apple Watch. And I was happy to give you a little glimpse, glimpse sorry, a glimpse and what Apple Watch does. So this has been a really collaborative effort across Apple, and it's just such an honor to work with the team. Now, in addition to the work we've been doing, we've also been working to enable third-party developers to extend their apps to Apple Watch. And apps are, of course, something we pioneered uh, with the App Store on the iPhone, and developers create things that do things we never imagined were possible. And we think there's a great opportunity now on Apple Watch for them. So we've created something to enable this on the Apple Watch. Initially, notifications will just show up. So for example, if you've got a notification from Facebook coming in, it'll look like this. If you choose to have these appear on your watch, you can have any of your third-party apps appear here, and they look uh, very simple. Now you can extend this even further and create a much more integrated experience with Apple Watch with something called WatchKit. WatchKit is something that enables developers to create rich, actionable notifications with those buttons 
WatchKit apps that appear right in the home screen, and also the glances that we saw. So here are a few examples of this. Here we have Twitter with a notification coming in. And you can see it's using the same layout as the original tweet, but now it's much richer with images and text. It looks like the Twitter brand, and it has buttons that you'd like to use to favorite or retweet right on that message. Now, in addition to custom notifications, you can also create apps that appear on the home screen. Here's the Twitter app. If I tap on that, it will just launch the app. And here I can view things on my timeline, look at trending tweets, or I can actually tweet from my Apple Watch by tapping on the top there. A few more examples. When you're traveling with Apple Watch, it's really great. American Airlines has created a great experience all the way from checking in with one tap on your watch all the way through collecting your bags. When you're checking into a hotel, Starwood Hotels is creating this great app for Apple Watch that lets you check into the hotel and you can unlock your hotel room door by waving your watch in front of the door. And that will be available across all W hotels in the springtime around the world. City Mapper enables you to get mass transit directions, and it will also remind you to get off at the right stop just by using Tapshowator on your wrist. Pinterest, when you've pinned sites in cities you're traveling to, it can remind you when you get near them and give you walking directions to them. BMW lets you see the charge level in your car, and if you forgot where you parked it, it will actually show you a map of where you left your car, and then directions back to it. MLB lets you see the current sports scores. Honeywell lets you control the temperature in your home. With the Lutron app, you can control the lighting and the scenes in your home with one tap. With the Nike app, you can challenge your friends to go for a run. So these are just some of the examples of the great apps that are already underway for Apple Watch. And we just can't wait to see what developers are going to create in this great new platform. Thank you very much. Great job. amazing what you can do from your wrist. And I'd like to spend a moment talking about yet one more, and that is health and fitness. This is a very important area for me and a very important area for Apple. The Apple builds great products that enrich people's lives, and arguably we can take that to a whole new level with Apple Watch. Being more active, as it turns out, is one of the best things you can do to improve your health. An Apple Watch gives us the ability to motivate people to be more active and more healthy. So if you're just someone who wants to be a bit more active, or maybe you just want to track what you're doing during the day, or perhaps you exercise regularly, or even if you're a very serious athlete, Apple Watch helps you live a better day. We have two new applications in Apple Watch. The first is the fitness app. The fitness app monitors all of your activity and movement throughout the day. And the second is the workout app. The workout app allows you to set specific goals for specific types of workouts, like cycling or running. We've built an incredible team in health and fitness at Apple to work on Apple Watch. And in the video that follows, they're going to show you how all of this comes together to give you a comprehensive view of your daily activity. Apple Watch is designed to help anyone who wears it lead a healthier life by being more active. From people who just want to be more active throughout their day, to those who work out a few times a week, to athletes committed to improving their performance. Apple Watch brings together the capabilities of an all-day fitness tracker and a highly advanced sports watch in one device you can wear all the time. It can track a wider variety of activities because it's able to collect more types of data. It uses an accelerometer to measure your total body movement. It has a custom sensor that can measure intensity by tracking your heart rate. 
and it uses the GPS and Wi-Fi in your iPhone to track how far you've moved. We wanted to give you the most complete picture of your all-day activity, and not just highlight the quantity of movement, but the quality and frequency as well. So the Activity app on Apple Watch measures three separate aspects of movement, with the goal of helping you sit less, move more, and get some exercise. The Move Ring measures the calories you've burned. That gives you the best overview of how active you are. The Move Ring is customized to you, and you close it when you hit your personal calorie goal for the day. The Exercise Ring captures the brisk activity that you've done. This doesn't necessarily mean hardcore exercise. It means any activity done at the level of a brisk walk or above. You close the ring when you hit the globally recommended 30 minutes of exercise per day. And it doesn't even need to be all at once. The stand ring shows how often you've stood up to take a break from sitting, which helps you minimize your sedentary time. Now this may seem like a small thing, but sitting less can go a long ways towards improving your health. A complete ring means that you've stood for at least one minute in 12 different hours during the day. There's also a dedicated workout app to provide more detailed measurement when you need it most. You can select your workout from a list of popular activities, then set a goal based on how long you want to work out, the number of calories you want to burn, or the distance you want to go. And during your workout, you can see in a glance how far, how fast, and how long you've been at it. When you're done, you can end your workout, see an entire summary of your session, and earn awards for your achievements. The fitness app on the iPhone stores all your activity data and lets you see your workout history whenever you want. It also shares your data with the health app, where it can be accessed by health and fitness related third party apps. Over time, Apple Watch actually gets to know you the way a good personal trainer would. It's designed to deliver intelligent reminders to keep you motivated and on track. And it can suggest goals that are personal, realistic, and most important, achievable, which gives you a far better chance of succeeding. Apple Watch is gonna greatly improve the way we keep track of our activity and change the way we look at fitness. We think it's gonna help a lot of people live a better day and a healthier life. We could not be more excited about bringing these health and fitness features to the Apple Watch. Apple Watch required some deep innovation. It's a precise timepiece with incredible ability to customize. It's a new, innovative, intimate way to communicate directly from your wrist. And it's a comprehensive health and fitness device. And it is so much more that we don't have time to cover this morning. I use mine to control my Apple TV. Another member of the team loves to use theirs as a viewfinder for their iPhone camera. Still another loves the walkie-talkie ability. The list of features is a mile long. And I'm certain when developers get their hands on the developer kit, that list will get even longer, and there will be things that we couldn't even imagine in it. Apple Watch has been curated into three collections, the Apple Watch, the Apple Watch Sport, and the Apple Watch Edition. Apple Watch requires the iPhone because it's been designed to seamlessly work together, like with handoff, where you might read an email on your watch, and then respond to it on the iPhone, the email appears right in the lock screen of your iPhone. It's really cool. Of course, Apple Watch works with iPhone 6 and iPhone 6 Plus, but we've also designed it so that it will work with iPhone 5, iPhone 5C, and iPhone 5S.
This means that over 200 million people already can use Apple Watch. Now, we expect the usage of Apple Watch through the day to be incredible because there's so many different things you can do with it. And so we've designed it so that it's simple to charge at night. We've, or we're using inductive charging. It has a magnet, and it aligns perfectly to the back of the watch. It is so simple and elegant. It's something only Apple could do. <laughs> Apple Watch starts at only $349. And it will be available early next year, and it is worth the wait. <laughs> we think people are going to love to use Apple Watch. They're going to love to wear it. It's something functional, yet incredibly beautiful. It empowers people and enriches their lives. Apple Watch is the most personal device Apple has ever created. We are so excited about Apple Watch, and I hope you are as well. <laughs> it's been an incredibly fun morning for us. You've seen the iPhone 6 and the iPhone 6 Plus. These are the best iPhones we've ever made. And they have amazing larger displays, but more importantly, they're, big, they're better in every single way. It's the biggest advancement in the history of iPhone. And Apple Pay, it's gonna change the way you pay for things forever. And everything you need is right in your iPhone 6 and 6 Plus. Now, it also works with another product. Apple Pay will work with Apple Watch. <laughs> Everything you need is built right into Apple Watch. And so now, the foundation of Apple is built on the best personal computers in the world with the Macintosh, the best tablets in the world with iPad, the best phones in the world with iPhone, made even better today with iPhone 6 and 6 Plus, running the world's most advanced mobile operating system with iOS 8. We couldn't be more excited that iOS 8 is finding its way into other parts of people's lives with HomeKit, HealthKit, and CarPlay, and now adding Apple Watch. Apple Watch, the most personal device we've ever created, it will redefine what people expect from a watch. Now, there's one other thing I'd like to talk about. And that is our love for music. Music runs deep in Apple's DNA. And it runs through the core of all of our products. Apple changed the way people listen to music a decade ago, and iTunes has been at the center of that experience. We celebrate our love for music with the iTunes Festival. And it is going on as we speak in London at the historic Roundhouse. Tonight, Sam Smith will be performing. Over the years, we've had the, some of the best musical artists in history performing at the iTunes Festival and some of the best performing at our own Apple events. And through that time, we've built a very deep relationship with the music industry and the artists that make it up. A decade ago, we began a very deep collaboration with one of the best bands of all time. And that, that band 
is you too. You too has agreed to perform for you today. And we could not be more excited about this. U2 is among the most respected artists in the world, among the best selling. They've won more Grammy Awards than any single band in history. They're a member of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And as accomplished as they are in music, they have also made incredible accomplishments by focusing on human rights causes and the advancement of the human race. It is incredible honor for us to have you two join us on stage and perform.
with Joey Ramone. The miracle of Joey Ramone and the Ramones. Thank you. You guys are freaking great. <laughs> you are great. Wow. That was the most. Wasn't that the most incredible single you've ever heard? Miracle of Joey Ramone. We would love a whole album of that. Uh -huh. There are rumors that you two have made an album in the last five years. That's untrue. We have made several albums. We just haven't released them. Uh, we're making music all the time. That's what we do. Uh, with this, we wanted to wait until we had one that was as good as our very best work, as good as the best we've ever done. And uh, You know, we feel the same way about products. <laughs> We're the blood in your machines. Oh, Zen master of hard and software, Tim Cook. <laughs> and, uh, look, we fit it, as of last, this time last week, we finished our album. It's called Songs of Innocence. We're very excited about it. The question is now, Zen Master, how do we get it to as many people as possible? Because that's what our band is, is all about. Wait, are we, are we the very first people to see this in the world? Yes. <laughs> kind of see it. Is this a white label copy? That's a white label copy, that is. And the question is, and I think you can help us. How do we get this to as many people as possible? Well, well you know, we do have iTunes. I do believe you have over a half a billion subscribers to iTunes. So could you get this to them? Sure, we could do that. Could you, like, do it in... Five seconds just by pressing a sort of magic Apple send button. You could if, do that? If we gave it away for free. But first you would have to pay for it. <laughs> because we're not going in for the free music round here. You, you would consider? consider? I've been told I'm a good negotiator. <laughs> <laughs> you would consider putting Songs of Innocence out to over half a billion people free in, say, five seconds from now. Yes. We could, we press the button, it'll take a little longer to get all the way across the internet, but it can start in five seconds. So you 2 let me just get this straight. <laughs> u two's new album, Songs of Innocence, is going out for free to a half a billion people in the next five seconds. Five, four, four three, three, two, one. one. Wow, that's instant gratification. Did that really happen? Did that really happen? We're not kidding, that just happened. Incredible. Thank you to everyone at the Apple team. This is a, this is a very, very big deal for us. It's, it's kind of our core DNA. The clue is in the name, but we really do want to get our music. We've put everything we have into this. It's our most personal record, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So... Just, just to make sure that we're all clear, every iTunes customer gets this album, this incredible album, for free. Woo! That's over a half a billion customers. And it makes music history because it's the largest album release of all time. Now, just to go through the details, 
every iTunes customer in 119 countries. It's available throughout the day in your iTunes music library. All you have to do is click, and you can begin listening to this incredible music. It will also be on iTunes Radio and Beats Music. And, yeah. And it will only be with Apple until mid-October. And so if you aren't an iTunes customer today, become one before mid-October and you get this album for free. I'd really like to thank the band. This is incredible for us and incredible for all of our customers, and I can't think of anyone they would like to have music from more. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's give him a big hand. Now, we were so excited about this, we made an ad. Because we want to make sure everybody knows about it so everybody can take advantage of it. And I'd love to run it for you now. So you've just witnessed the biggest album release in the history of music, and it's going to sound absolutely fantastic on your iPhone 6. <laughs> Today's been super. I want to thank everyone for coming. I especially want to thank all the people from Apple that were so involved. Please stand up. Everyone from Apple that was involved in these products, please stand up. They are the reasons that we can create great products like this and have events like this to hopefully make all of our customers happy. I'd like to call out especially Johnny Ive for his incredible contribution on the Apple Watch. And Jeff Williams, who has been running the engineering team on Apple Watch. And Craig Federighi, who's been responsible for iOS 8. And Eddie Q, who was the driver of Apple Pay. And everyone at Apple, you are the reason we're able to do this. For the press and guests, we have the most amazing hands-on experience, far beyond what we've ever had, waiting for you. And I hope you take the time to go in to get your hands on the new iPhones and the Apple Watch and try out Apple Pay. We promise not to use your credit card. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for coming. It's been a privilege to see you this morning. Goodbye. <laughs>